Jake Tyler has recently moved to Orlando with his family to support his younger brother Charlie in his probable tennis career. Jake was a football star back in Iowa, but his temper has often led him to trouble. Just before the move, he got into a fight with a boy who made fun of his dead father. Jake has a lot of pent-up anger after his father died in a drunk driving car accident. Also, his relationship with his mother is falling apart. Being a new kid in the school, Jake has a hard time blending in and feels like an outsider. Right on his first day, he sees a group of students beating a fellow student. When Jake tries to intervene and help the boy, the victim hits him back. Jake is confused by the outcome and decides to walk off while the boys continue their fight. He later befriends Baha Miller, a beautiful and flirtatious girl in the school. During dinner, Jake's mother asks him how he liked the new school. However, due to the crack in their relationship, they cannot have any normal conversation and end up arguing with each other. Back in school, the same guy from the previous day approaches Jake and introduces himself as Max Cooperman. He tells Jake that he knows about him being a football player in Iowa. He adds that everyone in the school also knows about him now, after a video of his fight has circulated all over the school. Max tells him that the fight he witnessed the other day was an organized fight match. As Jake listens to Max blabber, he says that he's been learning mixed martial arts from his master Jean Rocoa. But Jake has no interest in learning how to fight. And just like that, with one video, Jake is suddenly in the limelight. But he's uncomfortable with being recognized for bad reasons. Never Back Down is a movie about Jake, a rebellious teen who is lured into an underground fighting club. Jake has no interest in these fights, but after receiving threats to the safety of his friends and family, he seeks the mentoring of a veteran fighter. Watch how Jake turns from a reckless rebel into a well-balanced martial arts fighter. Now back to the video. Baha invites him to a party. Now, since Jake has a little crush on her, Mr. Athlete was beaming throughout the day. At night, he excitedly goes to the party and meets Max, who introduces him to Ryan McCarthy. Ryan shows him around. Like any other party, there are games, drinks, music, and dance. But the highlight of this party is fight night, where everyone who wants to fight gets a shot. Ryan asks Jake if he's ready for the main event, which is the fight between them. As Ryan gets ready for the fight, he brings up the Iowa football match to provoke Jake, but he repeatedly tells Ryan that he does not want to fight with anyone. When Ryan asks what he's doing at the party, Jake looks in the direction of Baja. He now realizes that he's been set up by Baja, who turns out to be Ryan's girlfriend. As Jake attempts to leave the party, some guys block his path, and Ryan makes fun of his father's death. Initially, Jake tries not to get involved in any fight, but he loses his cool at the mention of his father's death. And finally, Jake agrees to fight with Ryan. Jake is not a wannabe fighter. He's the MMA champion. However, his athletic skill does not make much of a difference as he's thrown to the ground every time he gets up. And as expected, Jake loses the fight as Ryan knocks him out. Fortunately, Max doesn't abandon the battered Jake all alone and sends him to his house. As Jake rests at home, the entire school is talking about his fight with Ryan last night. After school, Max visits Jake's house to check on him. He's also there to give Jake a CD that contains the best techniques to learn mixed martial arts. But the main objective of his visit is to invite Jake to learn from Jean Rocroix. Totally uninterested in his offer, he asks Max to leave. However, holding the CD in his hand, Jake starts contemplating. And the very next day, Jake shows up in Jean Rocroix's 365 Combat Club. Max gladly welcomes him and introduces him to his master. Jean tells him that he can start attending the beginner's class the next day, but Jake begs him to let him in the advanced class, saying he's a quick learner. Then, Jean puts him through some physical tests, and after seeing his determination, he accepts him in the advanced class. Finally, he notifies Jake of one last rule. Fighting outside the gym is not allowed no matter what, and if he does, he will be thrown out of the gym. Later that night, Baja comes to meet Jake and apologizes for setting him up for the fight. She tells him that she never imagined the fight would go out of hand, but he doesn't forgive her since he's not a simp. Early in the morning, Jake arrives at the 365 Combat Club an hour before the schedule. While he's paying his training fee, he notices that Jean lives in the gym. While Jake is practicing his punches, Jean comes and instructs him to add a round kick in addition to it. He does as instructed, but seeing that the kick is not powerful at all, Jean coaches him to breathe as he strikes. Even then, his kicks have no power on them, so Jean demonstrates the breathing technique for him. With this, his rigorous training starts in the gym. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Charlie also starts his tennis practice. One evening, Jake's mother confronts him for taking $200 out of her bank account. She asks where the money is and looks inside his gym bag. When she sees the boxing gloves, she loses her cool and berates him. Jake tries explaining it to her, but she refuses to listen. 
A few days later, Baja goes to meet Ryan and rebukes him for the things he's done to Jake. But Ryan does not have an ounce of regret for humiliating Jake in front of everyone. Baja feels that Ryan has become a sadist who enjoys hurting people. So, unable to withstand it anymore, she breaks up with him. As his insecurity pours in, he grabs her arm tightly, hurting her. When Jake tries to intervene, Baja tells him not to get involved. Just then, Ryan once again brings out the death of his father. Jake is furious the whole day long, and it's reflected in his training as well. Clearly, he's unable to focus on the training, and Jean notices this. He then orders Jake to go home and cool off his mind. And as he leaves with Max, Jake taunts him by saying at least he has a home to go to. The two then drive off in Max's car. They stop at a stop sign, but the car behind them keeps on honking. This adds fuel to Jake's fuming mood, so he gets out of the car and gets into a brawl with the people behind them. While he fights, Max captures the whole thing on video, and as expected, the video spreads like wildfire. The next day, Baja tries to talk to Jake at the beach, but even that does not go well. Ryan and his friends see them standing together, which irritates Ryan a little. So when he finds Jake alone in the restroom, Ryan warns him to stay away from Baja. They both know that Ryan can beat the pulp out of Jake, but Ryan needs people around him to feel the joy of violence. Therefore, he challenges Jake to come to Beatdown, which is an underground fighting tournament. Max tells him that the beatdown will be organized sometime next month, but the time and place will be messaged to the fighter at the last minute before the final showdown. Jake goes to the gym as usual, but as soon as Jean sees his wounded hands, he knows that the boy has fought outside the gym. Immediately after, he kicks Jake out of the gym. When he reaches home, he sees his mother scolding Charlie for fighting and coming home with a bruised eye. She even scolds Jake for setting a bad example for his little brother, and soon enough, they start arguing. Unable to control her temper, she throws and smashes a glass. She asks Charlie if he wants to try breaking stuff too, and he smashes a plate as well. Charlie confesses that he did not get into a fight, but was hit by a ball during practice. But he thought that it sounded cooler if he said he got into a fight. Since Jake is not allowed to step inside the gym anymore, he has no other way than to wait for Jean to come out. Finally at night, Jean leaves the gym to buy some groceries. Jake approaches him and confesses that from the beginning, he had the intention to fight outside the gym. In fact, the main reason he joined the gym is to beat this one guy from school. Jake even shares his past and says that he could have prevented his father's death, and because of that, the pent-up guilt has transformed into anger. Jake knows that he let down his family by getting into fights, but this time, he wants to make things straight and not get angry anymore. He reveals that the only time he is not angry is when he's training in the gym. His sincerity touched Jean's heart, and eventually, he tells Jake to come back to the gym. Jean starts putting Jake under extreme training and pushes his limit. All this time, Max has always been a good friend to Jake, no matter the circumstances. And in the meantime, Jake and Jean also get closer. One day, he asks Jean why he lives at the gym and why the gym is open every day. As the men are now comfortable with each other, Jean slowly opens up. He tells Jake that he once had a little brother, Joseph, who was a great fighter. One day, they had a clash with a man in a local bar and Joseph beat him. The man left the bar humiliated, but soon he returned and shot Joseph in the head. So, with the guilt of not being able to protect his little brother, he's not been able to meet anyone outside the gym. As days go by, Jean teaches Jake how to change position and free himself when the opponent holds him down. But he also mentions that every situation is different and it's up to him to find a way to change his position. One day, Jake comes home and finds a note from his mother telling him that she's in Charlie's tournament. His mother has always urged him to come to Charlie's game, but he never did. However, this time, he goes to the tournament to cheer for his little brother. Seeing Jake there, both the little brother and their mother have happy faces. She also expresses that she wants to make things better with them. Later on, Jake meets with Baja and admits that choosing to fight was a mistake on his side. He also acknowledges that she tried to apologize multiple times, but he was always rude to her. With apologies accepted on both sides, they start their new relationship. One evening, Jake's mother visits 365 Combat Club to meet Jean Roquois, her son's master. In front of her, Jean praises Jake for being much more than a good fighter. Since Jake has become a changed man due to the training, she has nothing to criticize about Jean. She pays him Jake's next month's fee, and before leaving, she subtly asks him to take care of her son. Everything seems to be working out in Jake's life. His relationship with his family is improving, and he has a girlfriend, so he no longer needs to prove himself to anyone. When Max informs him that the beatdown event is happening the next day, Jake tells him that he has decided not to fight.
Meanwhile, Ryan's father does not hold himself back when he starts humiliating his son in front of his friends. In addition to that, Ryan learns that Jake has withdrawn from the beatdown, and he becomes even more agitated. Also, people around him have started to look down on him. To find Jake, Ryan goes to 365 Combat Club and sees that Max is about to leave. He extends an invitation for Max to hang out at his house, where he can show some of his new moves to the boys. Ryan asks him to ride together with him in his car. Being excited, Max gets in his car and does not hear his master calling his name. Once they reach his home, Max tries to teach the boys the breathing technique, but they dismiss him by simply laughing at him. Seizing the chance, Ryan asks him for a match. Since they don't have any gear on, Max thinks that this is just friendly sparring. But once Ryan starts hitting him, he does not hold back. He crushes the poor boy and leaves him in front of Jake's apartment. After seeing Max beaten to a pulp, they immediately take him to the hospital. Baja suggests that they call the police, but Max tells her not to. Infuriated, Jake borrows his car key and walks out of there. Baja follows him out, trying to stop him from acting recklessly. She tells him that Ryan is laying a trap for him and waiting for him to catch the bait. But Jake tells her that he cannot just sit and wait for Ryan to harm the people he cares about. So to end this, he needs to face Ryan. He heads over to the gym where Max has parked his car. Noticing Jake outside, Jean comes out and asks him what's wrong. When Jake says that Max is in the hospital, Jean realizes the guy he saw earlier must be responsible for it. Then he tells Jake that no matter what the reason is, if he fights outside, he can never come back to the gym ever again. But this time, Jake tells him about the night his father died. He had every opportunity to stop his father from driving, but he chose to do nothing and let it be. From his experience, he knows that sometimes doing nothing can have grave consequences too. Now, Jake brings out Jean's past and asks him if he won't do anything to the man who shot his brother. Now that his sore spot is being touched, with tears in his eyes, Jean confesses that he feels disgusted with himself every day for the past seven years. He also says that he does not have the guts to see his family and friends. Hearing this, Jake points out that he's running away from his situation and that he gave up. Furthermore, Jake tells him that he should have fought for his father's forgiveness. With everyone having to fight their own battle, Jake chooses to fight Ryan, regardless of the result. As Jake leaves, Jean advises him to control the outcome, reminding him that he's the one who can steer the fight in any direction he wants. Jake goes to his house and grabs his father's shirt and heads off to the beatdown. A crowd of people has gathered to watch the no-holds-barred tournament. The fight ends with a tap-out or a knockout, but they do have rules for no eye gouging, no crotch shot, and no biting. Jake checks in for the match and the battle begins. Both Ryan and Jake make it through round after round, but during one match, Jake's opponent hurts his ribs. However, he still wins the match and advances to the semifinals. Jake goes to the kitchen and applies the ice press over his injury to soothe it. Just then, Baja comes in to show her support for him. She tells him that she has acknowledged his reason to fight and that she believes in him. On the other hand, Ryan is struggling with his opponent, so he scoops low and gouges the other guy's eye and makes him tap out. Shortly after, Ryan's misconduct is discovered and the referee disqualifies him from the match. When Jake finds out that Ryan has been disqualified, he immediately taps out of the match. Since all he wanted was to fight Ryan, he walks out with Baja, thinking the fight's over. But fuming with anger, Ryan storms out of the parking lot to stop him. When he asks what he's doing, Jake answers that the tournament was never his goal. Ryan tries to provoke him, saying that he's giving up and running. Jake responds that he's ready to fight, but the spectators that Ryan cares so much about are no longer there to watch them fight. Ryan feels insulted by this, so he attacks Jake first, and the two finally start fighting. With the news that the real fight is going on outside, everyone flocks to the parking lot. Earlier, Ryan noticed Jake getting hurt on the side of his stomach, so he continues to hit him in the weak spot. Ryan slams Jake's back quite a few times and holds him in a choke. Jake is on the verge of losing consciousness. However, he finds a way to break loose and applying all the techniques that he learned from Jean, he knocks Ryan out. At the same time, the hospitalized Max watches the grand match on his phone. He cheers for his friend as Jake finally beats Ryan. After a few days, Max resumes school with Jake. Ryan has accepted his defeat and they both stay out of each other's way. On the other side, Jean has packed his bag and booked a ticket to Brazil to reunite with his family and friends. And finally, the story ends with Jean closing down 365 Combat Club.